Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, news, news, and some things that may well be referred to as news. Starting off the news this week, the first ever satellite mission to launch in the UK has ended in failure as the rocket suffered an anomaly and was lost on its way to orbit. The launch was carried out by Virgin Orbit and was assisted by a 747 jumbo jet to reach a certain height before the rocket itself was released and took over the journey to space. Not too much is yet known about the issue, but Virgin Orbit say that the issue was with the second stage of the two-stage rocket. How far into an orbit the second stage managed to reach is unknown, but Virgin Orbit have assured people that if there is a danger of re-entry and it is an unstable orbit, it won't land on any populated areas. This historic first launch from the UK is set to be the first of many as the UK Space Agency seeks to set up multiple launch sites, also with conventional launch capabilities. And now over to Ben with the tree news. Thanks Doug. Well, first up in the news this week is a very interesting study looking at how UVB radiation damage may have affected the end Permian mass extinction event. Studying a section of rock that records the Permian-Triassic boundary, and therefore includes the time of the so-called Great Dying, which was the most severe mass extinction event in the history of life, the authors of this paper looked at the relative concentration of certain compounds in fossil pollen grains found in the rocks. These compounds, called ultraviolet B absorbing compounds, or UACs, showed a distinct increase in concentration within pollen grains that coincides with other chemical indicators for volcanism and disruption to the carbon cycle, showing that plants at this time were therefore under stress from enhanced ultraviolet B levels. This is pretty good evidence then that ozone layer depletion was another significant factor in driving the end Permian mass extinction on the land, killing off plants and sterilizing them in some cases, leading to cascading effects throughout the entire terrestrial biosphere. So, an interesting addition to the variety of papers that show why being alive at the end of the Permian would have absolutely sucked. Another very interesting paper published recently has looked at how Ornithischian dinosaurs independently evolved herbivory. This study explains how high fibre herbivory has evolved within the Ornithischian dinosaurs quite a few different times, in the armoured dinosaurs, in the heterodontosaurids, in the ornithopods, and in the ceratopsians. Pachycephalosaurs were also presumably mostly herbivorous, although perhaps also omnivorous as some have suggested, but either way they're not really focused on in the study. Anyway, applying finite element analysis to the skulls of five early branching members of the major Ornithischian groups in order to determine how efficient the feeding apparatus was in each group, this new study finds that all these dinosaurs evolved herbivory in quite different ways. The armoured Thariophorans showed relatively low performance in terms of their feeding apparatus, but compensated for this by increasing their overall body size. Heterodontosaurids expanded the size of their jaw muscles, ornithopods evolved a more efficient jaw system, and ceratopsians, the horned dinosaurs, combined all of these responses. It's very interesting then to think about how all these unique solutions appeared among these diverse dinosaurs, and the paper takes this as evidence to show the unpredictable nature of macroevolution, with a combination of different factors resulting in various answers to the same problem. And finally for this week, you may have heard something about a fairly controversial paper claiming that Tyrannosaurus was as smart as a baboon, and also potentially capable of tool use and developing culture. I won't say too much about it here, as we plan to cover it in much more detail in a future episode of Boneheads, but uh, yeah, it exists, so there's that. But if you'd like to see me discuss this at length with other paleontology students, be sure to look out for that Boneheads episode. Anyway, that's it from me for this week, back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you last year.